I told you. You did not tell me. I did too. That's what I meant by I don't think we have any. <laughs> you can go crazy? Yep. Started seeing this informational crisis on the horizon. I certainly was not the only person. But I was. Trash bags? We need trash bags. Get a kitchen. Big ones? How many gallons is that? <laughs> hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi, hi. Who is it? It's some guy named Spud. Who is it? It's a boy named Hammy. Who is it? It's a boy named Hammy. Zombie, zombie, zombie. Zombie, zombie, zombie. Ah, Than never. <laughs> Was it everything you dreamed of? Yeah. I thought it might have been. I feel like the couch is off center from the rug. Oh. Post traumatic. Bye. Chantel v. v. Johnson. Johnson. I'm liking it. It's a proof. It comes out in April. Out by Little Brown. April 5th? Yeah, April 5th. It's written by a lawyer and it's about a lawyer. We have some auto fiction energy going on. Um, it's about a lawyer who works in a psych ward for mentally ill patients and is an appointed lawyer by the state for her patients. Um, so far, it's very interior. She's just moving through the world, DWM vibes, and is kind of recounting her childhood as she goes about her daily life and also is beginning to date. It definitely uses reflection as a tool to think about past trauma it's very interested in the idea of trauma obviously her day job um as her day job lends itself to being very dramatic but i think also she's just interested in the inherent trauma of being a mixed race woman who has come from a poverty background and been a victim of sexual abuse the main character definitely feels this sense of like surveillance around her at all times which is interesting to read about it's kind of like the compound of her identity and all of its intersections just result in the feeling of surveillance for her even if it's a uh, projected real or like presumed surveillance she is just hyper vigilant and aware of her surroundings at all times which makes sense um for a black latinx woman to have those those feelings for for survival reasons right he's also dealing with some food control issues i think it's definitely like balancing that hyper overachiever controlled like perfection of what what a model minority like success story looks like as she's you know risen from her humble upbringings and now she's a, a lawyer living in new york city versus like what's happening in the undercurrent inside of her which i think is um an interesting duality there's a lot of lot of dualities in this book a lot of um comparisons of the perceived and what's what's actually happening i really like the narrator her name is Vivian very funny this book is like very wry and funny and pokes fun at lived trauma which is 
I don't know, refreshing, I guess. There's a chapter in the beginning where she goes over to her best friend, Jane, who is also a black woman who is a lawyer. And the way they just have like a comfortable dialogue where they're able to really unpack and like poke at and just laugh at each other's shared dysfunction just felt like really real to me. I think um, if you have any close relationships in your life where like you don't have to, I don't know, like it made me think of like how the fact I've known my friend Alex for forever and like I don't have to explain anything to her. You know what I mean? She's, it's just like those comfortability of people who've like been witness to your entire life. <laughs> so you don't have to like explain why it's funny to make a joke about alcoholism, for example, or something like that. Um, so I think there's some kind of like really interesting cadence of wry coping humor that's happening in this book that is really fun to read. It's my current read, Post Traumatic by Chantel B. Johnson. I feel like this cover is trying to give high fidelity Zoe Kravitz. Am I right? What do you think you'll miss the most about the house? I think I'll miss the kitchen. Because you never spend any time in it? No, I just think it looks the best. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. I'll actually miss the garbage can. It's being hidden. So here's the thing. I don't think I read a single book in February, but I did start three of them. One book? I don't think I finished a single book. Jesus. I don't remember if I finished Crossroads in February. It might have been like early February, but I think that might be the last book I read in completion. I'm not calling these DNFs, but they are books that I've stopped reading for right now, <laughs> which isn't a good sign with me. But Strangers I Know by Claudia Durastante. This has potential. It's good. It's billed as a novel. It is not a novel. This is kind of like an auto fiction memoir and it was kind of, uh, I don't know, I just felt like deceit upon it while I was reading it because it is so autobiographical and has such a memoir tone to it. I don't know. It's like a whole other conversation about um auto fiction and what is a novel and all of those big looming questions in the literary world right now but regardless i wanted to read a novel and this was not a novel but it is like a really interior meditative lyrical beautifully written book about an italian american woman and ideas of identity and home and what it means to belong to some place and being a child of deaf adults and disability and messy weird relationships and it's told chronologically from the time the narrator is a child up until the present i'm assuming the author is the italian translator for ocean wong's books this is also blurbed by Jumpa Lahiri and Lauren Groff. So it's it's got the goods, it's got it. I'm just like, need a story right now. You know what I mean? This is way less of a, a DNF. I actually am still actively reading this. Manual for Cleaning Women by Lydia, nope, by Lucia Berlin. My friend Sujay got this for me for my birthday. It's a collection of short stories, all kind of in the American, American Southwest vernacular, I think so far. Kind of like women on the verge, on the edge. DWM, Women versus the Void vibes. Um, I'm liking it so far. Reading it before I go to bed as I am to do with short story collections. And then another book that I'm just barely into is this Fran Leibowitz reader. Got it when I saw her um, live. Barely into it. I think I will be alternating between this and the short story collection before I go to bed. Um, and then yesterday, I had to do a return on Hawthorne 
no, I had to go shopping on Hawthorne Street and I popped into the Powell's that's there. It's actually my, like maybe controversial, but I think that might be my preferred Powell's. It just hits a little bit differently. It is still a good sized bookstore, but it's not like massive. You know what I mean? And they actually had this in stock when Maine Powell's did in a few weeks ago. Um, so this is Cold Enough for Snow. It's a novel by Jessica Ow out by New Directions. Uh, a lot of my friends have read this. A lot of my friends have loved this. I think it's like a slow, sleepy, meditative book about identity and mother and daughter relationships and art and art making and meaning making and memory. All of those good, sleepy, sad things. I'm not super in the mood to pick something up like this right now unless it is really navigated by plot or like held together at least by like maybe a short snappy period of time. Um, let me know if you've read that. I'm assuming it is like, because I know it takes place on a vacation, so maybe it is threaded together and held really closely in a certain time period. Um, but it is on my radar. Did want to make sure to get it. And then the other book that I picked up at Powell's is Mona by Pola Olikrak. Olikrak. <laughs> it's definitely not oily croc, I'll tell you that. Um, Translated by Adam Morris. A lot of my friends have read this again. Gorgiana cover. Who's this out by? Picador. Picador? Pika or Pekka? <laughs> oh yeah, a Peruvian writer who is in like an academic sphere and is at a literary conference, I think. Yep, she's nominated for a liter literary award and she has to go to Scandinavia. I hear it has a romp feel to it while also being smart and kind of a surprise ending so i'm excited to read that as well but that's kind of what i have going on i can't say i'm feeling too bookish lately i don't know <laughs> postmodern no post-traumatic is helping me sink into reading a little bit more uh, i've watched a couple of movies last night we watched red rocket which is a movie by Sean Baker, who is the director of The Florida Project, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. This movie did not work as well for me as The Florida Project did. I think it was a long drawn out character study of kind of like one scumbag, which I think Sean Baker is really good at. I liked, I liked, I liked the movie. I liked the visual vernacular of like rundown small town, small town Americana. Um, I think Sean Baker, I need to research him, but he is like kind of horny for poverty porn <laughs> in his movies, um, which is kind of a red flag when it's a white male director to me. Um, but I thought the lead performance was really well done, but I think the pacing overall left it kind of lackluster for me, maybe a little sleepy. And then the day before that, we watched Fresh, which is a new like horror comedy movie starring Daisy Edgar Jones and Sebastian Stan on Hulu. I thought it was fun and rompy and um, ridiculous and campy. I kind of wish it like went there more and was more, I don't know, um, hysterical or or used some kind of like less metaphorical imagery about violence and consumption of women and what it means to be a woman dating men <laughs> um and like under the threat of perceived violence but it still works for me overall i think it's worth worth a watch and then i'm going to go see x this week with um kiki and my friend taylor and ale and um it's another horror movie out by a24 and i heard it's good i heard it's good too and i heard it's about porn stars who end up in like a texas chainsaw massacre situation <laughs> which sounds great i actually was looking at letterboxd Last night, I love Letterbox. I wish, I wish Storygraph was like Letterbox. I think Letterbox is actually like a really good peer review media app. Um, there needs to be a book equivalent to it. Letterbox should make it themselves. The the share function of being able to share to stories and like view view reviews succinctly is 
great. That app's interface is amazing. Um, shout out to Letterboxd. But I was on Letterboxd last night and you can make lists, which are like, you know, little curated lists of certain movies that fall under a certain theme. And I looked up A24 and they have like a list on there of A24 based on release date. And I think it'd be fun to maybe try to watch them all in chronological order. Um, yeah, <laughs> I know not very um, inventive or original to like A24 movies, but hey, they're good. Sorry, like I'm not a film head per se. Don't really know a lot of the historical cool things to like. Same with books, right? Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Just just reading and watching stuff and I like it. Uh, but that'd be fun one day, maybe. Reading challenge? Watching challenge, I mean. <laughs> uh, 